Hello and welcome back to a new episode of Life Cycle. Uh, this is episode two in uh, my shorter series of Life Cycle of um, insects that we uh, are kind of depending on when uh, tying and fishing flies for fish, trout in my case. Uh, last episode um, if you haven't watched it, so go back and, uh, and have a look. It was about stonefly and today we are doing a life cycle about uh, caddies. So we will have the larva, uh, the pupa, uh, the merger, the adult insect, uh, maybe a fluttering caddis and also a spent caddis. So let's go. So of course we will start with the larva, the nymph stadium of the caddis uh, after it's uh, emerged from an egg uh, it's a, a larva uh, so uh, I prefer to do a very simple fly but which is very buggy and this this uh, is a really a, a fish catcher uh, I'm using uh, Aurex um, Curved Nymph, this is the size 10, you can tie it down to, to um, 16 but then it's very small. I like this size a lot, I fish this size and also 12 a lot. Sorry, we will start with some um, uh, weight, I'm using a lead, fra lead free wire, uh, a round one. And I do, depending how heavy you want it, but six, seven turns like that in the uh, round the middle of the, of the of the hook, and then I, I attach the thread. In this case, it's just a normal brown eight watt or twelve watt brown thread and I start with taking uh, ultra wire size small this is golden olive I like this color for this fly a lot I tie it in slightly down to the hook bend and then I use uh, Ostrich, ostrich hurl. This is this uh, cream olive one, and I tie it down as I did with the wire. Remove that, and then I use two kinds of dubbing to this fly. This uh, SLF squirrel light olive. and start with a smaller amount of dubbing so you can control the fly and the dubbing of course and you also want a little bit of taper in the fly and the back body will um, be two thirds for this fly and here's the trick why I put in the wire this is to strengthen up the uh, ostrich hurl so I take this together and I twist them like this And this wire also give a little nice bling to the fly. You don't need to have the ostrich hurl, but I think it gives a nice little gill effect for the fly. The fish don't care, but it's looking good at the vise and also, of course, 
in the box. And then I use a darker SLF squirrel dubbing. This is the brown olive, yes. And like I said before, don't use too much dubbing here. We have a lot of different caddis flies and larvas of course and how they live. We have cased caddies and we have like free living. Um, yeah, a lot of different kind of, of, of um, caddies. But this is a imitates a, a free living uh, caddies very well. And then when you're happy with the head, you just Do some whip finishes and the fly is almost done but I want it a little bit buggy so I use a dubbing brush to just pick out some fibers so if you don't catch any fish on this I will eat the fly I promise this is a really nice buggy imitation of the caddis larva uh, you can also put a bead on it if you want it heavier, some uh, scud back, but I think this imitation is very very good and it you can actually use this as a gamorous as well, uh, but like a caddis larva I dig it a lot. Okay, so now when uh, we're done with the caddis larva we will tie the caddis pupa. Uh, so let's go. So for this imitation I use a straight hook instead. Uh, this is a RX501 or RX500 in size 10. I will tie these flies on a little bit bigger hooks since it, I think it will be easier for, for you to start with and then you can, when you feel comfortable with the flies, you can tie them in smaller sizes, 12, 14, 16. Um, I use the same thread as before brown one. This is a fly called Super Puppan, a Swedish pattern uh, I think from the start. Uh, but this is my own variation for this. Uh, you will need a hackle for the body. This is a brown uh, cape hackle. So I start with taking the feather and pull the fibers from the stem because I want, since the uh, uh, fibers are tapered, I want them go to go shorter to uh, longer fibers when I tie this. So when I have some of the fibers in a straight line like this, I cut this off and tie it in. And if you watched the first episode, you saw that I used a lot of the material and more than once. And I will also do this in this series, of course. So now I use the SLF scroll dub in light olive again. This is uh, for the back part of the body. And like in the uh, larva, the pupa will also have two thirds of the fly will this will be this lighter color and then we will have one third with the darker and try to build up a nice not too thick tapered body so when you're done the two thirds with the light one you now take the darker one. If you forget what kind of material I will use or using, you can find the description in the YouTube clip below or the description. Now 
Now you have a two toned body, so now you will take the hackle and hackle the body. Even turns. A lot of people they cut the up and the down the hackles but I never do because I think it's have a little more uh, flotation hackle in the fly like this it doesn't matter it will since they have uh, a little bit of weight in the hook it will land properly but I use a nice uh, um, some a, a good floatant um, for this uh, since you want it in the surface but you can also fish this below surface that's why it's a good fly uh, but fish love them so let's continue with the uh, emerger so now the flies are maybe getting a little bit more difficult but they're not um, it's a few more materials in this in this emerger, uh, which I like, but uh, I think you will manage to, to fix it. So this is a RX uh, a curved dry fly, also size 10, since I said I want to tie the flies a little bit bigger, so it will be easier for for you to start tying these flies. But then when you feel comfortable, you can tie them in smaller sizes as well. I tie this fly uh, down to size 14. So I use again the same dubbing as I used before. S left scroll in light olive. And I start to fly a bit down in the hook band like this. And try to make a sort of a tapered body. And I leave close to four millimeters uh, to the hook eye, and then I just take the brush a bit to make the body a little bit buggy like that. And then I start with CDC, and I want it to float well so I can fish uh, riffle and oh, foster water. So I use two or three CDC feathers depending how how thick the feathers are. And I want the feathers to just go back to the hook bend. And I tie them in. And then I'm using a short, fine, uh, either a deer hair or comparadon hair. Uh, this is, you can use whatever color you want, but this is a bleached one or natural. I think it's nice to have a little uh, color variation in this fly. And I use a hair stacker to get the fibers, the tips aligned. If you don't know how to use them, you just take this and put it down in the stacker. You don't need it, but I think it makes the fly a little nicer with the tips aligned. So I put them in the line with the CDC and untie, tie them in with some heavy turns so you know they will stay at place. The other ones you just cut away. Nice. 
nothing more difficult than that. That looks fine. You can tie them down a bit. And then for legs, I want to use a soft tackle. This is our own MTS hem saddles, which is very nice. I have a lot of different colors in stock, and we will have new every week. So find which one you like. And I uh, take away feathers below because that's just nothing to use. I want the feather to look like this. <laughs> I'll tie it in. Like that. And here you can decide if you just want to have like one turn or two. I prefer two to have it a little bit more buggy. And I pull the fibers back. This fly, you can fish it. Um, Normally I just free drift this this pattern, but you can also give it a little a little twitch or something if you want that. But normally I just fish it like free drifting. And then for the thorax I use this darker dubbing again. That like we had in the in the two flies before this one and I try to make a nice thorax like that and we finish or I can half finish if you want to and then I just use my dubbing brush again to just pick out some of the fibers. So this is a nice emerger which I like a lot. I tied it without the hen hackles before but I think those make a nice uh, extra for the, for the fly as you can see uh, in the bottom. And some more life. So let's now let's tie uh, the adult caddis. I think a lot of you have heard about this fly before. I call it a deer hair caddis. Some call it the elk hair caddis. Uh, I use deer hair to this one, uh, which is a little bit easier to get a hold of, um, at least here in Sweden. But you can use deer hair or elk hair. Uh, also of course but I call this uh, deer hair caddis and for this fly like we used in the for the pupa we need a brown hackle and we do as we did with with the other one uh, that I pull the fibers down so they will get kind of straight you can also moist your fingers a little bit So you will have this and you can tie this in. For this you can use a super fine dubbing which is uh, could be actually a bit more nice. But I will use the SLF scroll dubbing again because I like it and it doesn't it doesn't do so much but a lot of people rather use a super fine dubbing but if you make a dub make or dub a, a tight body it's it's okay and use a nice good floatant 
So, like I said before, don't overdo the dubbing. Just try to to take as little dubbing as you can and do a nice tight body for this fly. And I leave about three millimeters to the head and then we hackle the fly again. This is a very popular fly and it fishes really 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 good so this is a fly you should actually have in a couple of different sizes. 10, 12, 14 then you're then you're home. And I hackle the body like this and then cut away the fibers. And now for the tricky part. Uh, as man, many people think, they think deer hair is a tough, tough thing to work with, but when you just learn it's okay. So I think you should use a hair stacker for this, but if you don't have one you can tie them in uh, like this. It will do, the, the fly will work, no problem. But I rather have all the tips aligned. Uh, I think that's a little bit nicer. So I use, you can, I will take, many people talk about pen sizes, but I take just a clump that I feel this is, this is nice. And if you have a hair stacker, just put it in. This is the Rossetti one, I like it a lot. They have some different sizes. And I just stack them like this. And then the tips are aligned. Some shit there, but that will fall off. And then I just measure. I want it just to go to the hook bend. Or where the hook ends. And then I take the other hand. Capture them. And I use a, a scissor with a long blade. And I just cut them off like this. And then I do one, two soft turns. And then I just pull them hard. And I pull them up. Do some turns. And finish the fly. Then if you don't feel happy with your head, you can cut it a bit more, but I really don't care so much about this, I just want it to be okay. So this is a deer arcadis, it's a perfect imitation for almost a lot of stadi sta stades, stadiums in, in uh, uh, f for the caddies since they have the hackle body as a pupa uh, as a emerger or like an adult also a fluttering caddies but this is a very nice imitation and if you learn to do this right with the hair and stuff it's kind of simple as well so this is a nice perfect uh, imitation for the for the adult caddies and now let's tie a fluttering one so here again we use the Audex Freshwater 501 or 500 if you want the barb or not and the same thread of course and a fluttering caddis is a fly that lays very high up in the water uh, and floats very well so you want some more volume and materials that float very well uh, <clears throat> I guess you will have a piece of feather that looks like this since you have used the other ones for uh, the other flies so I will use this which is perfect for this for this uh, fly and tie them in 
since the feathers are the fibers are straight again and we use the same dubbing as we've used before the SLF scroll in light olive or you can use the darker one if you want but I like the, the light olive for this one and like I said don't overdo with the dubbing you just want a nice body so I dub the fly and leave around 3-4 millimeters to the head uh, I use my dubbing brush to do to rough the body a bit and then hack all the fly so it's close to a uh, Irrecadis already, but it will be not. Uh, and then CDC feathers. In this case, I use at least three, maybe four. I will use four in this one. And just tie them in and then we will use a material for the wings which is called sparkle merger yarn and I tie them in like this on both sides and I dub the thorax again this time again with the darker darker uh, SLF scroll that we have used in the other flies with the head just we finish the fly pick out some of the head fibers like this and then you take the wing I prefer to use a scissor with long blades and cut as you can see this fly is a little bit bigger but when you have learned to tie the fly, just tie them in smaller sizes. And here you have a very nice fluttering caddis. And now let's tie the spent caddis. So for this spent caddis, I use the 501 again, Orex size 10, but prefer I prefer to tie this in like 14, 12 or 14. Uh, I use the same thread as we have used to all the flies and here you need a pretty long CDC feather or it will make it a little bit sim more easier to tie this fly so I take the top the tip of this feather just pull some of the fibers back and tie it in like this and here as before I use the same dubbing the SLF light olive and I want a really nice 
thin body, so I just use a small amount of dubbing. And I leave around 3 millimeters to the hook guy. Let's pick out some of the fibers with my dubbing brush. And I use a hackle plier, or in this case it's a stone foil with this feather. I love this, it's the best hackle plier ever. And then you just hackle the body. Why I use CDC for this purpose is because it gets a little bit better flotation for the fly, uh, which I like, and some more life to it, even, even if it's supposed to imitate the dead one. <clears throat> and then you will need two CDC feathers. And I align the tips and this is kind of difficult it's a uh, uh, you have to like measure them in depending how long you want them but I will measure them like with the hook and then tie them in And you don't need to cut them clean, I just cut them like this, so you have a little bit more flotation over there. A little pillow. And then I use the darker dubbing. And I do some turns here, and then you need to take the CDC feathers and pull them back and you continue with the dubbing in the front need some more because you need to push down the wings like that perfect when you're happy with the result you just whip finish the fly And then the spent caddis is done. If you think these fibers on this on for this CDC CDC hackle is a bit too long, you just can use your nails to make them a little bit shorter. But there I'm very very happy. So I hope you really liked this second episode of Life Cycle. And this time it was a caddis and next time we will actually do a mayfly. So I hope you're looking forward to that because I do. Uh, hopefully I can oh, publish it in a week or so. Uh, so if you like this please leave a thumbs up. Uh, and please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this and uh, also if you liked it and want to see some different species of caddies uh, like smaller granon, grandis, uh, cinnamon uh, just uh, leave a comment or if there's something else you want to see also leave a comment uh, and if you just want to say nothing then also leave a comment. Uh, so, until next time, tie and die.